It's a beautiful building featuring traditional Malay architecture and stands majestically in the heart of Kuala Lumpur as a national treasure. Museum Negara, which was upgraded in 2008, shows an interesting and interactive medium for visitors to explore the history of Malaysia starting from the prehistoric era until now. Museum Negara is now headed by the Director and placed under the administration of the Department of Museums Malaysia, Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. We are now in the first gallery, which is the prehistoric era. So the first section of the museum is consists of prehistorical era, the development of process of human civilization is closely related to the formation and the changes in the environment and its surrounding area. In Malaysia, there were several important locations of early human inhabitation. A more well-known location is Lenggong, Wucha and Kota Tampai. The first era in prehistory is Paleolithic Era. This era is also known as Old Stone Age. The immensely long period extending from the human first evolved up to 10,000 years ago, there are two main centers for the development of Paleolithic culture in Malaysia, which is Langong in Perak and Tingkayu in Sabah. Okay, as you can see here, this is the artifacts which is from the Paleolithic era. Second is Neolithic Age. The Neolithic Age or the New Stone Age is characterized through the existing of stone tools such as the S and X that were printed into various shapes, as well as the utilization of personal and human accessory and water in an elixir manner. They were also said to process the skill and knowledge regarding the type of stone and earth that are suitable to be made into implements. Neolithic communities also practice rudimentary farming such as planting of crops, domesticated and rare animals, and may also have been involved in barter trade. They put on a tire specially made from the bark of trees. Sunita era is the Bronze Age. The discovery of the molding material produced by the local community to make bronze eggs and the Bohrheim or archaeological site in Perak clearly proved that the Bronze Age have existed in Malaysia approximately 3,000 years ago. However, the Bronze drums and dust artifacts are among the most significant discoveries which represented this age. The drums found in Pahang, Selangor, and Terengganu. The bronze drums discovered in Banting, which is Selangor, was dated about 2,620 years ago. It was found where it with its face placed into a piece of plank with a small boat and accompanied, accompanied with pottery and beads. Okay, the last era is Iron Age. Based on the research and the discovery of artifacts produced by the local community at the site of the slate stone grave, Iron Age is believed to have existed in Malaysia since the early 7th century following the Bronze Age. Iron Age is characterized by the discovery of iron artifacts comprising axe, earth, shinkel, a knife, and spear head. Most of these iron implements are believed to have handled made from wood or rattan. Some of the artifacts found have unique shapes resembling the red the red bones of animals. These artifacts are also known as tulang mawas. They were Malay kingdoms in Egypt early in the second century. They were found throughout the Malay world. The Malay Archipelago, Belago, which consists of the Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Sumatra, Java, Celebes, and the Molucas, other islands in modern Indonesia, and the Philippines. It is also part of Indochina. Historical records and surviving artifacts provide evidence that this kingdom consists organized system of government and that their established relations with foreign government notably in China and India. Among the Malay Kingdom, some developed into a large empire as they assisted in expanding their political and economic power. Next, the Malay Kingdom of Malacca. The Malay Kingdom of Malacca in 1400 until 1511 was a very celebrated Malay empire within the archipelago. The unique feature which differentiated from
from early Muslim empires was the power of Islam. Malacca was founded around 1400 by Para Basara, the son of Prophet Sayyidina of Palembang, and the son in law, the Raja of Majapahit. Earlier, Parabasora had been the governor of Palembang and in Tomasi at Singapore. This extensive political, political experience was a great advantage for Parabasora, enabling him to deal with obstacles as well as to lay the basis for prosperity of the library. Islamization comes to Malacca is when the conversion of Sultan Magad is Kanasha, the second ruler of Malacca to Islamic religion, have made a history to the country and give the great impact to the administration system, culture and development. The Islamization of Malacca also made an attractive of Arab, Indian and Persian merchants to trade spices which made Malacca as the world known anthropod in the world. According to Chinese record, the Kingdom of Lakasuka existed early in the 2nd century and was based near modern Patani and Thailand. Lakasuka trade with India, China, with Asia, the Middle East, and other states in the Malay Archipelago. It reached its peak in the 6th century when its domains included Songkla, Kelantan, and Terengganu. The Kingdom of Kataha or Chicha existed before the 5th century. It was an important trade center to the peninsula. It sported with Martian ships from Sivijaya, India, China, and Arabia. Francisco de Melda to Malacca. However, he only managed to reach as far as Calicut. Thereafter, the king of Portugal sent Diago Lopez de Sucara to Malacca to help foster relations. Instead, the delegation was captured and although de Sucara managed to escape, not all his followers were so lucky. Upon hearing of the capture, the king of Portugal sent his armada to attack Malacca. The Malacca faced some of which were led by Sultan Ahmad, who wrote a resistance, but it was defeated, and the Portuguese armada successfully conquered Malacca on 15 August 1511. There are three purposes why Portuguese want to invade Malacca. The first one is for gold, to dominate the trade of spices and break the monopoly of Islamic merchants in West Europe and Malay Archipelago. The second one is gospel, which is to spread the Christianity. And the last one is the glory, to compete against other European invaders, such as British and Spanish. The British initially occupied Malacca on the basis of the Q letter from the 1795 till 1818. From 1818 till 1824, the Dutch occupied Malacca once again. Then, when the London Treaty or the Algo Dutch Treaty took effect on 17 March 1824, the British occupied Malacca, surrendering Bengalin and Sumatra back to the Dutch. All these three states were combined administratively in 
five seats. They are also who work hard and for easy to labor to build the railway on the Burmasyam border. The potent cry of Monica on 31st August 1957 marked the most historic moment for the people of Malaya after a protected struggle for independence. Several important events had taken place between the years 1948 until 1960, among them the emergency, which is the most difficult period in the history of the country. The Federation of Malaya declared a state of emergency in Malaya on 18 June 1948. This is was a direct consequence of the murder of three English state managers in Sungai Sibui, as well as the violence perpetrated by the Communist Party of Malaya in effort to prevent the Federation of Malaya. The first federal general election was held on 27 July 1955. It is the only general election in Malaya before the independence on 31st August 1957. The Alliance Party is consists of United Malay National Organization (UMNO), Malaysia Chinese Association (MCA), and Malaysia Indian Congress (MIC) won the election with 51 over 52 seats in Parliament against Pan-Malaysian Islamic Party PAS. The moment terms that had finally arrived, the British Union jet was lowered exactly at the stroke of the field in front of the Slago Club. The flag of the Federation of Malaya was raised with full glory signifying the independence of the beloved nation. The honor of raising the flag was given to Mr. Tahir Abdul Majid, witnessed by Tunku Abdul Rahman, Dato Tan Cheng Long, Dato Viti Sampatan, and Dato Sardan Jubil. The thousands of people from all walks of life and race, together with the independence fighter, witnessed the events with a great pride emotions. The formation of Malaysia was officially declared on 16 September 1963 with the match of Sabah, Sarawak, Singapore and the Federation of Malaya. The key factor that led to the formation of Malaysia was the mutual interest in the need to create political and economic unity. The plan to form Malaysia was proposed by Tunku Abdul Rahman on 27 May 1961 during his in Singapore. January 1962, the Cobalt Commission was formed to establish a stand of public opinion regarding the wage following a substitutional support show. A Malaysian Memorandum of Understanding was signed on 9 July 1963 by the representative from the stand that had agreed to merge, which led directly to the formation of the